Hi, it's Fernando. In our previous video, we uh, uh, talked about the reflection layer. In this video, we are going to talk about refraction layer. So let me show you what we have in my material. I have this material that is the one that I'm going to use for to demonstrate the refractions. And I have a blue color in my diffuse layer and a reflection options, a Fresnel's effect in my reflections. So when I click preview, this is what we have. Um, my intention is to explain uh, um, the refraction options. So in order to add the refraction options to create glass or translucency material, we have to right click on the material, create layer, and add a refraction layer. As you can see, uh, we have a refraction layer right now, but when I click preview in my material, we still have in the same uh, bluish or glossy uh, material. The reason is because my diffuse layer is blocking my refraction layer. So we need to uh, make this layer transparency or delete the layer or do something in order to see my refraction layer. There are three ways in order to uh, solve this issue. The one is just going to the diffuse layer and right click on it and remove the layer. The problem with this one is that the, if you want to create bomb map or if you want to add some more information, create like a displacement, you need uh, UV mapping. And the only way to create UV mapping is through the diffuse layer. So this is not a good, a good idea to delete the diffuse layer. The second option is just going to the transparency color and change the color to white. This is one good option, but the problem is that by doing that, we hide or we made invisible my geometry in the viewport. So if you want to manipulate orbit or make some changes to your, to, uh, your geometry, it's not, it's not a good idea to have, have uh, transparency or invisible geometry. In order to avoid the in, invisible geometry, I'm going to uh, change back the color to black and in my uh, texture mapping for the transparency I'm going to click there and I'm going to use a procedural mapping called a color. This a color allows you to select a color for the transparency options. I'm going to select white and in this way I can have the transparency, the translucency options or refractions uh, options and still having my color or my geometry in my viewport. Okay, for now we are going to use that option. If we want to tint or to change the color of the glass, by default we have a clear glass. If we have to change the color of the glass, uh, we, we could do that uh, in two different ways. Okay, in the reflection layer, we said that the reflection options or the reflection color control the amount of the reflections. Here, the refraction color doesn't control the amount of refractions. This guy control the color of the refraction. So if I change the color of the refractions to kind of blue, right, I'm going to have a blue material. So let me create a preview, a render, to see how my material looks. Here you go, this is my render. Let me move the, this window to the middle in order that you can see the options. As you can see in the render, I still have in the same uh, appearance in my, of my preview, but the problem with these options is that my material, the color of my material is even everywhere. In real life, the the tinted glass have a variation in in color depending of the thickness. The thicker part appear to be uh, darker than the thinner part. So this option here or changing the color to the uh, refraction color is not going to help me uh, to create a better a very realistic uh, glass. So I will change back the refraction color to white, and I'm going to use another options to tint the reflect the refractions. In the reflection layer, we use the filter to tint the reflections. Here in the refraction, we have options called fog color and color multiplier. Those options here, the fog color 
and the color multiplier control the behavior of the color in my scene. So I recommend you to use a very uh, low saturated color. So try to not use a high saturation in the color here. Try to use like a light, lighter version of the, your desired material. And then you can control the amount of the color or the darkness of the color to the color multiplier. So I'm going to use, I'm going to let the, I'm going to change the color multiplier to 1. I'm going to make a preview here. Usually the preview appear to be uh, darker. The reason is because the scene or the sphere that we that we are using in the preview material have a diameter of 30. So if the material is if the geometry is bigger, we are going to have a darker uh, color. If you want to see the real appearance of your scene, try to use 0.03 in your uh, Fault color, but this is only to see the preview how it's going to look your material if your material have a 1. So change back to color multiplier to 1, and this is how the material is going to look if you have a 1 diameter sphere and 1 color multiplier and the color. So as you see here, the color of the sphere should be the same color that you have. Again, when you have a color multiplier to 1 and the sphere that you are using have a 1 unit of diameter. Okay, I'm going to click render to see what we have right now. Okay, this is what we have. In order to show you the better, uh, better these options, I need to in increase the, to, have a, to use a darker uh, color here. So let me use a darker color. Okay, like this one. Uh, in order to see my uh, final result, very good. So I'm gonna make another preview here, and I'm gonna make a new render. Here we go. This is the final render. As you see here, by using the fog color, I have a different variation. I have a variation in the depending of the thickness. The thicker part is darker than the thinner part. And this is how it looks the glass material, the tinted glass material in real life. So uh, let me explain what I'm talking about, uh, the different thickness by using this three sphere. So I have those uh, three sphere with uh, the, the center sphere have uh, one inches, the left have 0.5, um, the left, the right one have two inches. I'm gonna make a render, see what we have. I'm using the same material that the previous one. Here we go. This is the final result. As you can see here, as you can see here, the smaller sphere is lighter than the uh, bigger one. If I want to increase the darkness of the material, I can increase this value, the color multiplier. If I increase a color multiplier, I, I am made, making dark, darker the color. If I reduce the color multiplier, I'm making um, lighter. So now I increase the color multiplier to 3, so I should have darker uh, color in my sphere. Here we go. In general, my sphere are darker than the previous render. It's very hard to see because I do not change the uh, font multiplier too much. But again, increases value. You are uh, making the darker uh, material. So let me explain another options uh, with this uh, scene here, and is the the glossiness. So, as in the reflections, if you want to add some blurriness to your scene, to your material you should change the glossiness. Here in the refraction, if you want to create a acid glass, you, sh you can add uh, glossiness to your uh, material. Remember, the glossiness here in the refraction is the glossiness inside the material or inside the refractions, and the glossiness here is outside the material, so it's going to be on the reflections. So I have this option here, this material here, 
with where I reduce the glossiness to 0.75. Also, the subdivision here control the amount or the quality, sorry, the quality of the uh, glossiness. So let me create a render to see what we have. Here we go. This is a render. Okay, I want to share with you some uh, details that I see here. Uh, one is the physical property of the glossiness material is that the object closer to the glossiness material appear to have to be more clear than the object uh, further away from the for the uh, glossiness material. As you can see the Y is more clear than the sketched word that is here. Let me show you what we have in the in the scene. So I have this scene here where the sketched word is further away from the from the uh, glass and the white is very close to the uh, glass. So that's why you see here the white more clear than the other word. So again you can see the acid option here in my glass. This is because I uh, changed the glossiness value. In overview the color of the refractions control the color of the material but the thickness is the color is going to be even in all the material the thought color here and the color multiplier control the color of my material as well but in this way this option are more uh, physical accurately than the color uh, of, of, of refractions the iron value control how much the rays get bended inside the material and you can find uh, a list of iron value in the internet so for example if you want to create a diamond the index of refractions for diamond is 2.47 something so that means that you are going to have more ray bending inside the material so you are going to have more refractivity so the affect shadows this guy is very important if you have a glass in in a windows and you have the sun that is hitting the windows and the sun is try, trying to get inside the, the room if you have the affect shadows disabled you are not going to see the sun coming through the windows so by default we have the effect shadow but some material, some all material doesn't have this option um, enabled by default uh, in this occasion you could not see the sun coming into the room the effect alpha is for uh, post processing so you can uh, change the background in the glass in photoshop if these options is enabled so I think this is all that I have for you today. Today, uh, so uh, see you next time. Bye bye.